here and do some good in this world. Thank you. Hello, my name is Rachel Boers, and I am the Vice President of the Traditional Cohort. I have the absolute honor to introduce our faculty. Um, first, and I'm not saying any favorites, is Jessica Belknap, <laughs> Miss Lisa Brown, Denisha Davis, Amber Dirksen, Donna Johnson, Angela Lunsford, Rhonda McCowan, Gayla Misick, Elizabeth Pettit, Jennifer Priano, Lisa Stam, and Anna Wells. Yes, we need to give them a big hand. Now I have the honor of introducing our speaker for today. It's Dr. Sandy Leak, DMP, RN, NEABC. She has held professional progressively responsible nursing and healthcare executive roles for over 35 years. A critical care nurse by background, Dr. Leek devoted 29 years of her career caring for veterans, served 22 years as the chief nursing officer, CNO, of one of the largest, most complex healthcare systems in the Department of Veterans Affairs held numerous national leadership roles and responsibilities, including two interim assignments leading national program offices in the VA Office of Nursing Services and twice led the Atlanta VA healthcare system to magnet destination by the American Nurses Credentialing Center. Her areas of expertise include workforce planning, leadership development, coaching, mentoring, and succession planning, developing innovating, innovative academic practice partnerships, and driving organizational excellence. She currently serves as the Senior Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer at the University of Tennessee Medical Center, which includes a 710-bed hospital representing East Tennessee's only academic medical center, Magnet Designated Hospital, and Level 1 Trauma Center. Dr. Leak led UTMC to its third Magnet destination in October 2021 placing UTMC in the top 2% of all hospitals for nursing practice and excellence outcomes. Dr. Leek is involved in significant and impactful national work. She currently is the nurse representative on a committee of the National Academics of Science, Engineering, and Technology titled the Committee on Transforming Healthcare to Create Whole Health, Strate Strategies to Assess, Spread, and Scale the Whole Person Approach to Health. Also, in January 2023, she will begin a two-year term as the member of the Board of Directors for the Friends of the National Institute of Nursing Research. Locally, Dr. Leek is the chair-elect of the American Organization of Nurse Leaders, Knoxville Chapter, and is participating in the 2023 Leadership Knoxville class. Dr. Leek obtained an, NS, an ASN sorry, from Dyersburg Community State College in 1984 a BSN from Memphis State University in 1987, an MSN Nursing Administration Focus from Vanderbilt University in 1989, and a DMP Nurse Executive Leadership Focus in 2017. And she holds National Certification Nurse Executive Advanced by the American Nurses Credentialing Center. She holds adjunct facility appointments in the Colleges of Nursing at Emory University, Augusta University, and the University of Tennessee. Please welcome San Dr. Sandy Leek. Thank you very much. Um, that introduction may be longer than my remarks, so, but thank you very much. Uh, it, it really is my pleasure to be here today and to congratulate all of you on this remarkable, remarkable success. Um, it's an honor for me to be here, and it feels a little bit like, like coming home, and I'll, I'll explain that uh, in just a minute. But truly, your congratulations are, are in order. And first, I would like to congratulate all of you, all 52 of you, on choosing nursing as a career. I made the same decision, and I, this was hard for me to believe, 40 years ago this year. 40 years ago in in 1982, I made the decision 
to become a nurse, and I've never, ever regretted that decision. Second, congratulations on selecting a top-tier associate degree program to get your nursing education and training. Uh, the reality is all programs are not created equally, and you made a terrific choice by choosing Pellissippi State Community College. I'm incredibly impressed by your first time NCLEX passing rate, uh, last go around I think 95%, and that ranks right up there with the best schools anywhere. So great job on making a great choice. Um, third, I'd like to congratulate you on successfully completing what I know has been a very grueling program. And being so near graduation, you must be incredibly excited and relieved. And finally, congratulations on the exciting career journey you are about to begin. Regardless of where you work, regardless of what you do as a nurse, you will make a difference in the lives of others. And I believe that truly is a gift. So um, as I mentioned, I began my nursing journey much like you are at a community college, uh, Dyersburg State Community College specifically in 1982. I just graduated from high school. My family was very supportive, but they had no ability whatsoever to help, help me financially. So I really had to figure it all out on my own. And my strategy was to find the best community college I could find, uh, become a registered nurse, begin working in part so I could survive, but also in part um, so that I could continue to help support my continued academic education. So I kept looking forward, I kept deciding the next step and figuring out how I could best make it happen, one step at a time, but always with a goal in mind. So after getting my associate degree, I began working nights on the weekend and going to school during the week. And then while working on my BSN, I was trying to figure out how I was gonna finance my graduate education. And I saw a scholarship posted back in the day, you know, on a, on a court bulletin board um, for an announcement for a VA health professional scholarship. It was a fabulous scholarship. It uh, provided basically uh, all the support I would need for graduate school in exchange for a two-year service commitment working for the Department of Veterans Affairs. Well, that was the last thing I had on my mind as a potential career. I didn't know much about the VA. I didn't know much about veteran health care. I was really primarily interested in pediatrics, and the VA certainly didn't have that. But again, I had a goal in mind, and I thought, I can go anywhere and work for two years and survive for two years and then move on with my career the way I saw it unfolding. So I was very fortunate to be accepted for that scholarship, and it sent me to Vanderbilt University where I got a master's in nursing administration, and then I went to work uh, to fulfill my two-year service commitment at the VA in Gainesville, Florida. Well, as it turns out, I stayed in that position for three years, and then my husband's um, job brought us to Atlanta, and by this time, I had immediately fallen in love with veterans and with veteran health care and all the complexities and nuances that that involved. So ultimately, as you heard, uh, I spent 29 years in the Department of Veterans Affairs um, and, and retired um, ultimately from the VA. So I like to look back at that and, and think how fortunate I was to have that experience and, um, and to have been able to contribute to the health care of those who served. Um, I've also been fortunate throughout my career to have many, many amazing opportunities to continue my formal academic education, as I mentioned, to advance my career, to hold local, regional, and national leadership roles, and to develop and influence national policy and practices, and ultimately to serve veterans, to serve patients and their families, and to serve the amazing nurses and team members who take care of patients um, all across this country. Um, so today's healthcare environment is, is challenging. I mean, you guys know that. You've been, you know, in and out of clinical rotations, but you're going to be entering healthcare officially as a nurse at an unprecedented time. COVID created lots of disruptions in the workforce, in the supply chain, and quite candidly, the last two and a half years 
have in many ways been the hardest uh, of my entire career. And I'm, again, I'm sure you've seen that, but things are getting better and they're gonna continue to get better. And the bottom line is that hospitals and healthcare systems need you. You are part of the solution. And I have been extraordinarily impressed by this new generation um, of nurses. I actively teach at Emory University, um, here at the University of Tennessee College of Nursing and Augusta University. And I sometimes think the rest of us standing here just need to get out of the way and let you guys take over because you're so smart and you're so dedicated and I really believe you are going to change the world. And so I was asked to just in closing, give a few pointers, uh, advice to a new graduate. So after being a nurse for 35 years, I've probably got a lot of advice I could give uh, a lot of people, but I'm gonna stick to five, five things that I think are especially important. And one is, um, as I've mentioned, recognize you're entering healthcare at a really, really unprecedented time. Um, many tenured nurses have retired. A number of people have left bedside positions because COVID created such, such challenges in, in staffing and other areas in our health systems. There's a lot of strain on healthcare systems financially right now. Uh, many of us have travelers that we haven't, you know, had before. And, you know, we're really, um, really working hard to stabilize things again. And everything is going to be okay. Uh, we see signs of that now. The improvements are steady. They're gradual. They're not happening as fast as we want them to, but they are going to happen incrementally. And as I said, you are part of the solution to help us get our health systems back on track because ultimately our community needs us. None of us knows when we might need to access health care. So that's advice number one. Advice number two is to be open and flexible. You may be fortunate to take your first job out of, out of nursing school and find your clinical passion right off the bat. I see many new grads who think they want to go into a particular area only to be somewhat disappointed that it's not entirely what they thought it was. So if that happens, give yourself grace. Um, know that you're going to learn immeasurable things wherever you go and that there are so many options in nursing that available to you that you will find your right fit and you will find your passion. So if that doesn't happen right off the bat, do not despair. It will all be okay. Um, my third point of advice is um, don't be seduced, essentially, by the lure of, you know, sexy areas that we see all on TV, like, ice, you know, critical care and trauma and, and the areas, the high intensity areas. Those are great. But there also are a whole host of other clinical areas that provide phenomenal learning and experience and opportunities to make a difference to make a difference in the lives of, of others. You know, medical surgical nursing is, for example, in itself a specialty. Those units provide phenomenal foundational learning, and we have many nurses who make a career of that and are, are very happy with, with their choice. Number four, commit yourself to continuous learning and education. So whether you choose to pursue additional academic education is up to you. I strongly encourage it, but ultimately that's a personal decision. But you must commit to continuously learn and embrace new information and new evidence because that's what drives best practices and outcomes. And five, number five, the last one is find a mentor. Find a mentor who is a nurse, someone who you trust, who will commit to you, commit their time and energy and talents to you and who will help you along in your career journey. That really uh, is invaluable. And so finally, in closing, um, I need to share something with you that I have said over and over and over in my career. And I really mean this with every ounce of sincerity. And that is of all the things I've done in my career, uh, it's hard to believe it's been 38 years now, um, all the schools I've attended, the degrees, the certifications, the national committees, boards, et cetera, I've been on, the hardest thing I have ever done in my career 
was to graduate from Dyersburg State Community College. And I mean that with every ounce of sincerity. That program very nearly killed me. Um, but it prepared me very well for everything else that has come my way since then. And I have no doubt that Pellissippi State Community College has done that also for you. So again, congratulations. You have an incredibly exciting journey ahead. Um, I look forward to uh, learning more about what you choose to do and the difference you make in the lives of others. And if there's ever, ever anything I can do to help you along your way, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you again and congratulations. The Sophomore Award of Merit is awarded by Pellissippi and has been established by the nursing faculty and is given semi-annually to a student whom the faculty have selected and have met the following criteria. Demonstrates a friendly and outgoing attitude. Demonstrates a caring approach through the art and science of professional nursing. Is willing to give of self to others demonstrates personal and professional growth. This year, the 2022 recipient for the Sophomore of Merit Award is Brianna Marshall. The Outstanding Nursing Graduate Award uh, from Pellissippi has been established by the Department of Nursing and is presented semi-annually to a student who demonstrates high academic achievement, provides excellent bedside care for his or her patients, goes beyond the expected to assist fellow classmates, demonstrates caring and compassion to his or her patients, and shows an appreciation and desire for lifelong learning. The 2022 recipient Outstanding Graduate is Ashley Gentry. The Heart of Nursing Award from the Department of Nursing is voted on by classmates and is awarded to a student at each campus who demonstrates exceptional caring attitude toward the patients assigned to his or her care, willingly gives of himself or herself to assist others, including classmates, and gives 110% effort in all aspects of his or her involvement. The 22 2022 recipients of the Heart of Nursing Award are the Straw Plains Campus Traditional, Christy Goff, and, and Straw Plains Campus Bridge, Leanne Perteau. The Dean's Award for Nursing Excellence from the Department of Nursing has been established and is selected by the Dean and given semi-annually to a student who demonstrates academic excellence, so is in the upper third of the class, 
demonstrates outstanding nursing ability and clinical performance, demonstrates excellent communication skills with patients, staff, and others, is active in student activities and community organizations. The 2022 recipient of the Dean's Award is Corinne Tarantino. The Lillian Wald Excellence in Clinical Nursing Award from Department of Nursing has been established by the Department of Nursing and is presented semi-annually to a student who provides effective patient-centered care, is a team member and collaborates with others on the delivery of safe patient care, uses evidence-based practice to guide care delivery, provides for patient safety and comfort in the clinical setting, incorporates the use of informatics when determining patient care. The 2022 recipient of Lillian Wald Excellence in Clinical Nursing Award is Christine Warner. Graduates, as we call your name, please come to the forward to uh, receive your pen. Monica Atchison. Kimberly Baker. Amber Barrows. Rachel Boers. Rio Boring. Ashley Brennan. Jordan Bryant. Whitney Capshaw. Heaven Crosby. Leanne Croteau. Zamoya Cry.
Mary Duncan. Chelsea Dunn. Rachel Franklin. Jennifer Ewing. Caitlin Fusler. Ashley Gentry. Christy Golf, Jessica Griffith, Amanda Hall. Katherine Hedgecock. Hannah Hennessy. Caitlin Hodge. <laughs> Jessica Jackson. Jamie Jordan. <laughs> McKenna Cop. <laughs> Wendy Lee. Brianna Marshall. <laughs> Melissa McGuire. Casey McIntosh. <laughs> J. 
Janelle Minte. Samuel Navarro Roach. <laughs> Emily Nelson. Carly Orr. Haley Patel. Laurent Poulin. Christy Rout. Aspen Russell. <laughs> Corin Tarantino. Catherine Trewinski, Jasmine Turner, Kristen Turner. Christine Warner. Marianne Whitaker. Congratulations. We will just wait on the last graduate to take pictures and um, I will be reading, sharing the light. She will come and be with you, guiding you on that deep and personal journey, shining a light ahead of you, 
a light that only comes from within and creeps into your lonely places of suffering. He will speak kind words in the dark of night, opening your windows to fresh air, holding your hand gently and bringing about peace and acting as a guide for you on your path forward to the unknown. They will walk with you on your personal healing journey, supporting your capacity for, for healing and ending suffering, all brought about by love and skills developed during the nurse's own healing journey. These nurses of healing and light, inspired by Florence Nightingale and purveyors of human caring, they're shining the light into the darkness of healthcare. They are healing the heart of the world. If I would invite everyone who is a nurse who would like to participate in the Nightingale Pledge, we invite you to stand as well. We'll begin the Nightingale Pledge. Please recite with me. I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in purity and to practice my profession faithfully. I shall abstain from whatever is deleterious and mischievous and shall not take or knowingly administer any harmful drugs. I shall do all in my power to maintain and alleviate the standard of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge and the practice of my calling. And I do mean elevate for anybody who's listening. Thank you. All right, y'all sit down for just a second. And turn off your candles for just a second. I'll turn y'all around in just a minute. I just wanted to say a few words to you guys. First, congratulations, class of 2022. Um, congratulations for achieving your goal. Congratulations to you and to your loved ones for all the sacrifices that have been made to get you here to this point in this moment of your life. This day is a day that has been dreamed about, planned for, and you have worked countless hours to attain. It's not by chance that any of you are sitting here today. Some of you may have wanted to be a nurse your whole life. Some of you may be like me and it just seemed like a good career choice because the world will always need nurses and bodily fluids don't totally gross you out except for sputum, which is... Ugh. Some of you may already work in healthcare. Um, and this was just the next rung on your ladder as you progressed in the healthcare profession. Regardless of the reason that we are looking at you now in these seats, I wanna to talk to you about what this profession truly is and how you can be successful at it. The secret is, if you want to be successful as a nurse, become significant. It doesn't matter what your work was before today, when you take on this new role, you will be terrified, you'll be stretched to the limit, confused, overwhelmed, tired, and unsure. You won't know the answers to many questions and you will feel alone at times. This profession, caring for others, takes, it, takes its toll on everyone at some point or another. So don't focus so much on being right or having all the answers. Focus on being significant. Being significant looks like this. Make sure the patient feels heard and cared for. Take care of your colleagues. Look to the left and to the right of you and ask them what you can do to help. Be humble ask questions. Don't have all the answers. Please don't ever be that nurse that thinks they have all the answers. Look for miracles. They're everywhere in healthcare. 
When you're overwhelmed and you're thinking, how do I do this? Turn your thoughts away from you and focus on what you can do for others. Not only will doing these things help you become significant, but it will lighten your load. Over time, success will follow and you will wake up one day knowing that you have a tribe of people around you, supporting you and encouraging you. Every nurse will tell you the difference their workday was when they had their tribe with them. At times, it will seem like Hades has opened up the underworld and brought it to your floor. And when you have your tribe with you, you roll up your sleeves and you get to work. And you know, if you ask any of the nurses, those were not the worst days. They always had a blanket of mercy around them because you were with your tribe. There's nothing you can't accomplish when you have others lifting you up and you are lifting them up. When someone is dying, what they want to know is, did I make an impact? Did my life mean something? Will I be missed? Will I be remembered? Will others want to be like me? What they are really asking is, was my life significant? Simply take care of those around you, raise the bar, treat others with respect and dig dignity, use G-rated language, listen, create appropriate boundaries, be honest, moral, and ethical. If you do these things, your life will mean something to more people than you will ever realize. Each of you want to be an excellent nurse. Being an excellent nurse isn't really about what you've learned in the textbooks. Yes, you need to know nursing process and the millions of meds that you can't even pronounce and who to go to when you need to ask questions. But the rest you already know. You learned it in kindergarten. Wisdom was not attained here in the nursing program. It was there in the sandbox. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and draw and sing and dance and play and work some every day. When you go out into the world, watch for traffic, hold hands and stick together. Be aware of wonder. Think of what a better world it would be if we all had cookies and milk at 2 p.m. and then laid down with, a, with our blankets for a nap. Or if we had a basic policy in our nation and other nations always to put things back where we found them and cleaned up our own messes. And it is still true, no matter how old you are, when you go out into the world, it's best to hold hands and stick together. Faculty have spent countless hours preparing and providing you all with the necessary information to be successful. We are beyond grateful to be a brick in the tremendous wall of who you are and who you are about to become. I'm sure there were bumps in the road. <clears throat> no program is perfect. But I hope you look back one day on your education and recognize that while changes can always be made, there was love, effort, and sacrifice by faculty and staff to help you achieve your goal of becoming a nurse. We view it as an honor to be able to teach and guide you into this noble profession. But it's not over, so a few more words of wisdom. The first is GI system is the best. The second is, Celebrate this milestone all weekend. The ceremony is a time for nurses, or us, to bring you into the fold. That's what this is all about. We are bringing you in to our fold. But on Monday, you better start studying for NCLEX. Our pass rates are wonderful, and we expect them to stay that way. So practice, practice, practice. Pick the most correct answer. Do enough SATA questions that your head spins. We expect you to be successful, and we know that you can. And I'm staring at each one of you guys in the eyes. Do you feel it? OK. Keep learning. Changes are frequent in healthcare, so keep reading, researching, and going to conferences. It will make you a better nurse. Pursue a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or even a doctorate. It's kind of cool. Who knows what waits for each of you? In closing, I want to offer you a challenge. You, class of 2022, are the future of nursing. You will shape this profession and you will propel it forward. 
I challenge you to be patient advocates. Be supportive of one another and advocate for each other. Generate changes in the profession that will allow for better health care. Create the changes in nursing that need to occur so others don't make changes that have negative impacts on the nursing profession. Get involved at the organizational level, the political level, the national level, and improve health care. Focus on becoming significant to those you have contact with. You have proven that you are Pellissippi strong. Now it's time to become nursing strong and influence the profession. in the way that we believe each of you to do. I wish you the best class of 2022. Students, please stand, turn on your candles, and turn to the, to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I proudly present the Pellissippi State Community College Nursing Class Fall 2022. We can play the song that they've requested and let them party their rear ends out. Friends to you 